Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're now back after spending a few months with the Einscan SP, and we now have a much more informed opinion, so this is going to be our review. So if you didn't see the video where we unboxed this, we talked a little bit about some of the specs, and a lot of what we talked about in that video was speculative, because all the information we really had was based off of the documentation, paperwork, things like that. Now, I have spent a few months with this, and I can safely say that quite a bit of that is true, but it is not the entire story. So first of all, this is the SP version, which of the two that look like this, there's the SP and the SE, this is the higher end model. So this scanner is capable of scanning in 0.05 millimeter details, or about 50 microns, which is actually really, really good. Uh, for scanners in this class, I suppose, desktop, similar looking, a lot of them are boasting 0.1 mil or maybe even more in some cases. They also claim that you can do a scan in four seconds, which honestly is like the best case scenario. If you did uh, no HDR mode, you had everything working properly, and you did only four steps, I think it's actually minimum eight steps that you can have the turntable run, maybe you can do it in four seconds, but your scan is going to be very, very low quality. When we reached out to EinScan, we had the intention of trying to scan in jewelry, as this is a jewelry channel, and they didn't really seem too worried by that. Many of the other scanning manufacturers that we reached out to actually just outright said, no, we won't send you anything because we know it's not gonna be able to perform. So I had some hope that this was going to work out really well for jewelry. However, it does not work very well for jewelry. It's just a, a matter of fact that this is not the ideal setup. Basically, this is too far away. Um, the turntable is, it's just not calibrated for it. They do, however, have a, another scanner that's unfortunately about five times the cost, which is designed specifically for scanning in jewelry. And it's called the Autoscan Sparkle. We've actually had a chance to play around with that machine when we went to Shop 3D. So we're going to return to that topic in a little bit. So back to this scanner though. Um, we found that it cannot scan in jewelry very well, even with this custom 3D printed cone that I, I started making and you know, I put targets and all over it. We went over a ton of different factors. We elevated it so that it was able to rotate around an exact central point and none of it really made any difference. It wasn't able to capture the amount of detail that I required. One of the best examples of this that we can actually compare between the Einscan SP and the Einscan Auto Sparkle is this watch case. This is a resin G-Shock case from a GA2100, pretty standard you know, Casio watch. And we wanted to just see how well it could get some of the details because it's a, a nice color. Uh, being that matte gray, it's not shiny, which most jewelry is. Um, the details have to be incredibly precise. So these were some of the details that we got from our scan. And you can definitely see a noticeable difference between the two. The Auto Sparkle one has, on the very first try, within a few seconds, has perfect detail of the front-facing lettering, among other things, and ours is pretty much blobby. I also tried scanning in some actual jewelry pieces. We ended up getting some cans of A-Sub disappearing spray from Shop 3D. Thank you, Shop 3D. And we were able to get much better detail with that spray. However, it still, the, it's limited to the scanner itself. We definitely have eliminated a lot of factors through our testing. So some of the things that I did to make sure that we were getting a really good scan was uh, changing the environment. This is not nearly as sensitive as photogrammetry where you have to have like a completely void black background. You can have this, you know, casting shadows on a back wall and the software is smart enough to understand that that is not part of the design. Because this scanner also produces its own light, it's not really structured light, it's not a laser scan, but it does project onto the, the models. It projects moving bars and, and other such things that help get the most amount of contrast and shadow when it does the scans of your object. So I found that getting rid of all the light possible because it's creating its own 
helps the most. A black background doesn't go amiss either, even though it does cancel out shadows. And it, again, it creates its own light projected from the scanner itself forward. So it's really hard to eliminate shadows unless you have like an infinite background somehow, or maybe you've painted it with like Vanta Black or Black 3.0 or something. So aside from physical factors, there are some things in the software that you really do need to consider as well. You can have the software do the scan based off of the turntable itself so that it understands every quarter turn that Im the image that it gets is what it is. Or you can have it scan by features, which is the best one, by the way. We'll talk about that more in a second. You can also have it scan based off of these target markers on the turntable. However, as intelligent as that was, we still found it to be very difficult with jewelry, basically borderline impossible. We still weren't able to get those accurate stone settings and things that we wanted. For the larger Funko Pop project, we were able to get really, really good detail. And that is probably no, in no small part due to kind of how simple the object is. Uh, there was very little texture going on. It was that matte gray color. So it just had the light perfectly exactly the way you want it. And then we also had to a sub it on top of that. So it was a lot of extra work to get a very basic shape. And uniquely, because we actually had the original 3D model and then the scan, we were able to compare them side by side and see what the kind of differences were. So going back to the software, um, the software is good in some sense, but also a real pain in others. It's, it's a very closed sandbox type bit of software. I wasn't able to change nearly as much as I wanted. It didn't give me a whole lot of extra information. Um, it just, like it felt kind of basic. And I think that was intentional because they actually do make two other kinds of software that you can export these scans directly to immediately after to get better results, kind of keeping you in this pay loop. So that's definitely something that you need to consider when you go to buy a scanner is you're not just necessarily buying the hardware, which you need, obviously, but you also need to consider the software. And I'm pretty sure that applies to pretty much every 3D scanner. So due to the fact that this is not really an entry level scanner, and then you also need that additional software, uh, this definitely puts it above a beginner or entry level product. So some of my final thoughts on the EinScan before we send it back to Shining. Um, I found this as a beginner to 3D scanning to be full of highs and full of lows. And they were both really, really, <laughs> really, really good or really, really bad. I really like the automation feature. I like that I can set up a model. I can just set it, let it go. Basically, if it takes 10 minutes to do a scan or one minute, it doesn't really matter. I can set it, forget it, go do something else. I am, however, not overly happy with the quality that I was getting, um, especially with jewelry, as mentioned before. You need to have uh, an object at least the size of a phone, I would say in height and yeah, about that size for you to get the best kind of details out of this scanner. So based off of my experience so far, would I recommend this to the jewelry industry? Definitely not. If you know that you're gonna be working with objects about phone size or you know small sculpture, things like this, then you're probably gonna have a lot more luck with this type of machine. The detail that I was able to get off of objects about this size was really, really good. However, it's not a turnkey solution. You're going to have to invest in software. The A sub is absolutely necessary for getting the best possible detail. And you're definitely gonna to have to be technologically inclined because there was not a whole lot of information that I could find to help solve some of my problems. A lot of it was just trial and error. So this whole experience has been very enlightening. There was a lot that I didn't know that I thought maybe logically I understood, but I was definitely surprised when it didn't end up working out that way. This is not the end of our 3D scanning journey. We're definitely gonna be looking into other options, either tabletop 3D scanners, like something like this, or we're also gonna be starting looking into photogrammetry because I have seen some scans from that. I know it's a lot more work, but the, level of detail that it's able to get off of human subjects, you know, with poor, perfect detail is very, very appealing to me, even if it does require a little bit more effort. So overall, I believe that this is a pretty decent product. It definitely has a very nicely integrated bit of software and the hardware does seem to work up to a certain point. 
I think one of the things that bothered me massively the most, um, now this is a very niche issue, I think, is that the software that you use to run this scanner is for Windows only, which I am a Mac person. And it was not a big deal because I was able to install Boot Camp uh, and I haven't had any issues with it, but it was a real pain to have to switch between and have like uh, an XFAT hard drive so I could move my scans over and move them into slicers and things. Uh, and I thought this was particularly ironic because on their literature, on their website, all the work is being done on Macs, on MacBooks. And I was kind of expecting at least a Mac version for what I would perceive to be a premium product. So this product does get a pass. It definitely does work. It just doesn't work very well with our workflow. We'll definitely be looking into other tabletop options in the near future just to see how things progress. Because I'm pretty sure this one actually came out in like 2018 or 2016 or something like that. So it's getting fairly old. I'd like to see what they come up with next. And for something that's more jewelry related specifically, make sure you get uh, subscribed because in a very near future video, we'll be looking at the Autoscan Sparkle, which we got to check out at uh, Shop 3D, uh, which is a local 3D print shop here in Canada. Uh, the Autoscan Sparkle was a phenomenal machine. It was very, very fast. Um, you won't want to miss that video.